Hi, today I'm going to show you how to build an automated invoicing system that will save you tons of time. We will have customer details automated, calculate totals and taxes, generate unique invoice numbers and export everything as a PDF, all with just a few clicks. Here is how the system works. Fill in invoice details like products, quantities and prices. The total will auto-calculate in cell F19, generate an invoice number by clicking a button and a unique number will appear in cell F4. Export to PDF with a single click and the PDF will be named using the invoice number and customer name. This system will streamline your invoicing process and make it super efficient. So let's dive in. We are starting with a set of sample customer data. We're going to use this to automate the customer details in the invoice. I would have this new sheet renamed to customers. In this customers tab, we will enter details for each customer, including their name, address, email, and phone number. Here is the sample data we will be working with. We will use this data to populate the customer details automatically in the invoice. Now that we have our customer data in place, let's create a new tab for the invoice. So add a new tab by clicking the plus icon and rename it to invoice. We will start by formatting this invoice tab to make it professional and clean. So go to the page layout tab and uncheck grid lines. This will make the background clean and give your invoice a polished look. Now, we are going to add your customer logo at the top. To do this, go to the Insert tab, click Pictures under Illustrations, and select this device to upload your logo. Have the logo resized if necessary, and fit it nicely within your layout. In B2, type Invoice, merge it across B2 to E2, Increase the font size to maybe 16 and apply bold to make the title stand out. I would increase the font size a bit more. Now, let's input the company's and customer's details. In B4, type from and make it bold. In B5 to B8, type your company's information like this. Make the company name bold to make it stand out from the rest. In D4, type Buto, bold it, and leave space in D5 to D7 for the customer's name, address, and email. This will be automated later. Let's move on to the invoice details, like invoice number and dates. In E4, type invoice number. Make it bold and leave F4 for the invoice number. We will automate this. In E5, type invoice date. Make that bold as well. And leave F5 for today's date. We will automate this with a formula. In E6, type due date. Bold it and leave F6 for the due date. We will automate this too. We're going to have the product table formatted to calculate totals and taxes automatically. Let's start by setting up the product table headers. So in B10 to F10, we are going to create column headers. I would have description in B10, quantity in C10, unit price, tax, and total, exclusive of tax. Make these headers bold, have it center aligned for clarity, Give it a dark feel like this and make the text color white. Add some sample information in row 11. For example, product A as the description, the quantity as one, and the unit price as 5025. Let's add borders around the product table for a clean and structured look. So select the range B10 to F15, right click, format cells, border, then hard outline and inside borders. Click OK. 
I would have the sales for unit price, tax, and the total formatted as currency. We are now going to automate key fields such as the invoice dates and the customer information with formulas to save time. So in H5, I will use the today function to automatically display today's dates. Then in H6, use this formula to calculate the due date based on a 30-day payment period. You can have this formula amended to suit your need by changing the figure here to the payment period that applies to you. I would have this field aligned to the right to make it appear as a form. Now in D5, let's create a drop-down list for customer names using data validation. So under the data tab, click on data validation, list, and select the customer names from the customers tab. Now you have a drop down list with all the customer names. So you can quickly make a selection of the customer you want to send the invoice to. For the customer address, email and phone number, we are going to use XLOOKUP to have them filled in automatically based on the customer name selected. For the address, I would type in the XLOOKUP formula. My lookup value is the customer name, so select that. The lookup array is in the customer's tab, which is the customer's name. And I want it to return the customer's address. So I will click on the B column and close. So for every customer name you have selected, you would have the address updated automatically for you. You can have this step repeated for the customer email and the phone number. Next, let's automate the calculation for tax and totals. In H11, use this formula to calculate tax based on a 20% tax rate. In H11, calculate the total before tax by simply multiplying C11, which is the quantity, by the unit price. Let's now automate the subtotals, the tax, and the grand total amount. So in H17, I would type subtotal, make it bold, and use this sum formula to sum the totals exclusive of tax. In H18, type tax, and again use the sum function to sum the total tax. Then in H19, type total. Then add the subtotal and the tax together to make the grand total. Format the total line to separate it from the rest of the figures by making it bold, giving it a border, like the top and the double bottom border, and give it a feel of your choice. Now, we will add the payment information section and comments to complete the invoice. So select the row right below the product table and apply a single line bottom border. This would separate the product information from the product table. In B22, type payment information. Have that meshed with cell C22, make it bold and increase the size. Right below it, we would enter the sample bank details. Then in E22, had a comment section. You can write something like, thank you for your business, payment is due in 30 days. Then have the invoice enclosed with an outer fig border. Finally, let's automate the process of generating invoice numbers and exporting the invoice to PDF. We are going to start by automating the generation of an invoice number. This will ensure that every time you create a new invoice, a unique number is assigned, but only when you're ready. If you have multiple lines of invoice transactions, don't worry, you won't get multiple invoice numbers. Instead, 
Once you're done entering all the details for the high terms, you will generate a single invoice number for the entire invoice by clicking a button. This method ensures that no extra numbers are generated while you're still working on the invoice. We're going to be using a macro for this. Here's how we will set it up. Click on the developer tab, then click on insert. And from the options, choose buttons under form controls. Draw the button anywhere on your invoice sheet where it's convenient. A window will appear asking you to assign a macro. We will now write the macro that will generate the invoice number when you click this button. So open the Visual Basic window by going to the Developer tab and clicking Visual Basic. In the Visual Basic editor, go to Insert, Module. In the new module, I'm going to paste this code. Now that we have the macro, let's go back and assign it to the button. So save that. Right click on the button, then choose Assign Macro. Select the macro named Generate Invoice Number and click OK. You can also right click the button and choose Edit Text to rename it as Generate Invoice Number. Make it bold. The button will generate a new invoice number in F4. This number starts from 1001 and it increases by one for each new invoice. The last used invoice number is stored in cell HI2, which will be hidden. This ensures that every new invoice gets a unique number and avoids duplications. To make sure HI2 is not being manually overwritten by mistake, we're going to have it hidden out of sight because we don't need it shown anywhere. And place that back to the top. Once you're finished filling in all the invoice details, such as the transaction lines, and the totals in F19 has been calculated, just click the Generate Invoice Number button to assign the number. It's just been changed to 2. If I click on that again, see how it's been updated in real time. This method gives you full control over when the number is generated, ensuring that no unnecessary invoice numbers are created while you're editing. After generating the invoice number, you can easily export the invoice to PDF. We will add the second button that will handle this. Here is how. Like before, go to the Developer tab, click Insert, and select button under Form Controls. Drop the button beside the first button or anywhere you like. And when prompted, assign a macro. Click OK for now. We will now write the macro to handle the PDF export. So going back to the Visual Basic under Developer tab, in the same module where we wrote the code for generating the invoice number, paste this code below the existing one. A line has just been added automatically to separate it from the existing one. Now save and close. Right click on the second button you created, choose Assign Macro and select Export Invoice to PDF. Have the button renamed to export to PDF by right-clicking and choosing edit text. I'll also make that bold. I will zoom out a bit so you can see at a glance what the invoice look like. This is what we have. Here's how the system works once everything is set up. You enter the transaction lines, the product, quantities and prices into the invoice. The total will be calculated in F19 based on these entries. Once all the details are filled in and you're ready to finalize the invoice, click the Generate Invoice Number button. A unique number will be generated in F4. Once the invoice number is generated, click the Export to PDF button to save the invoice as a PDF. If it's exported successfully, you get this message prompt. The PDF will be named using the invoice number and the customer name, just like we have it here, and saved to the specified folder part. In this case, it's saved in the C drive. Let's take a look at the PDF file that was just generated. So I'm going to go to my C drive to fetch it. For the code to work, you need to make sure you have a folder named invoices inside your C drive. 
So if you click on that, I would have the invoice created here, just as expected. Created with the invoice number and the customer name Testco. So if I open that, this is what we have. An automatically generated invoice number. Exactly as what we have on the template. Testco with the invoice number 1019. And that's it. We have just built an automated invoicing system that will save you hours of manual work. Click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. And I'll catch you in the next one.